is Boots Electric from Boots Electric and the Eagles of Death Metal, and you're watching Mosh Camp, the best thing in the world to watch ever. first gig I ever saw was with my pop. Uh, he was in a band called the Marshall Tucker Band, and uh, so he was keen to rock and roll. And uh, he bought front row center stage tickets to Ted Nugent and Kiss on the Destroyer tour. And I saw Kiss uh, at the Greenville Memorial Auditorium in 1976. That was the first real concert that I ever went to. And it changed my life forever in the best possible way. And I even think my genitalia were bulging at the end of the show. You know, at age seven, I still had the ability to, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it feels like that, you know? I didn't understand what it was going on, but it sure felt horny. I kind of look at that in a weird way. Uh, uh, first show I ever played was in fifth grade and it was a flute recital. So, you know, not the most masculine of, uh, of uh, instruments. So uh, my first real show was uh, Eagles of Death Metal opening for Placebo on that very first tour we did in front of like 5,000 people in uh, Canada. And uh, I loved it. And I just want more. That's how I looked at it. Can I have more, please? <laughs> you know, that whole thing. First show I ever played as Boots Electric was uh, at a place called the Three of Clubs in Hollywood, California on Santa Monica and Vine. Because, uh, to be honest, this Boots Electric scared the, the shit out of me because, uh, you know, I've been really babied and pampered. My best friend Joshua Hami is kind of like a, a Viking overlord of rock and roll, if you will. And so he did everything for me. I mean, I didn't have to do anything. And this time I had to do everything. And so the very first show, I don't even consider it a show, I consider it a, a catastrophe in front of people because that's what it felt like, you know, it felt like, uh, felt like my first day in jail and I was fresh fish. It didn't feel good in the backside, if you know what I'm saying. Jimi Hendrix Atlanta uh, Pop Festival 1970 gig is one that I really wish I could have seen. I really wish I could have seen uh, a Caius gig, probably not very famous, but uh, when they beat the shit out of everybody in the front row for uh, you know not, not treating them nicely. I wish I could have been there. To see a band walk off the stage and fuck everybody up, both literally and you know artistically. Wish I could have been there. I also wish I could have seen like, there's a couple damned gigs around 1977, 78 that I think are critical in the history of gigs. Gigs are the most important thing in rock and roll. The, the recorded element is the thing that is like a promise of what's gonna happen live. That's how I look at it. And so in terms of how gigs are operated, the damned with Rat Scabies and those boys, they sure did some really powerful stuff. And I wish I could have been there to see London in around 77, 78 when it was just about to fucking explode, you know what I mean? That would have been one hell of a time, dude. Faulty Towers, you know, that whole shit. It would have been just fresh off the heels of Faulty Tower. It would have been great, man. It's so cruel and delicious, I just find another fool. I love cover songs. I love covers because, you know, to me, everything is just a clever cover. There's nothing new under the sun. There ain't really one Eagles of Death Metal or Boots Electric song that you couldn't directly pinpoint to a Rolling Stones album, you know what I mean? Or a Funkadelic album. But live, in the live shit, I, I love to do uh, Brown Sugar. It's one of my favorite songs to do. I love uh, uh, In the Heat of the Night. I love to do doo-wop songs. Phil Phillips, uh, uh, the Honey Drippers did a version of a song by Phil Phillips called Do You Remember When We Met The Sea of Love? I love doing The Sea of Love. And then I also like to do hillbilly versions of my favorite Black Sabbath songs. Like uh, Behind the Wall of Sleep translates into a real porch. It's like literally, it sounds like some hillbilly just walked off the farm and can play it, but it's about satanic shit, you know what I mean? Something a little more, I think, accustomed to like Dudley JB's in uh, Birmingham. But it still works, so I love it. The 
best show I've ever put on, and that's it's a tough one because I've put on some real shows for my mom. They got me out of trouble. You know what I mean? Those were some of the best shows. And I remember my uh, my watch commander when I was in the army. Uh, I put on some real fucking performances for that old man. But uh, um, let's see, the Madam the Madam JoJo show in Soho, the ladies only show, was probably one of the best fucking shows I've ever played because it was just ladies only everywhere. It was. And there's a great song by a, a transvestite named Big Frida, and it's called Ass Everywhere, Ass Everywhere. Yeah, whenever there's ass everywhere, that's the best show I'm ever gonna put on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hate to sound cheeky, but it's the truth. I can tell by that look in your practical in how I judge myself. I, I don't ever like to set the bar too high. You know what I mean? It's easy to fail if you make it impossible for yourself to accomplish something. So I, I look at everything, every situation situational. So the worst shows I've ever played have yielded some great benefits, you know, lessons, things like that. So in the long run, they've turned out to be great shows. I mean, I hate to sound corny like that, but uh, I'm a politician and uh, I'll never ever say that I did something bad. It just doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> It doesn't feel like a boner. It feels like a softy. You know what I mean? It just don't work. You boys know what I'm saying. Okay, cool. The devil, he is creeping near, and he whispers in my ear, telling me he'll give me all that I desire. A couple favorite venues. Now venues, I will have a stack of favorite because I'm a big history buff with rock and roll. And so I believe that the spirits of those who came before can often be uh, alive again if you let them be. So Dudley JB's in Birmingham, which is where like Black Sabbath started, it's closed now, but that was one of my fucking favorite venues. Madame Jojo's, uh, Coco's in, in England, uh, the Troubadour in Hollywood, uh, the Henry Fonda Theater, it's one of my fucking, it's one of the best classic uh, theaters with the whole catwalk, you know what I mean, there, and the weighted bags and all that shit, you know, like the Phantom of the Opera is just waiting around every corner. Um, of course, now my favorite absolute venue would be in Blue Jay, Colorado, and that's because uh, I was able to leave the venue with about four of the hottest chicks that I've ever been able to squire away, and it became a four-way tie for last in a race with Boots Electric, if you know what I'm saying. So I think that's going to live on as a, as a permanent favorite in the old heart of Boots Electric. <laughs> love to play the Wembley Arena. <laughs> I would definitely love to play that. Uh, I would love to be able to play uh, the Fillmore East, but I don't think I can because I don't think it's there anymore. You know, that's where Jimi Hendrix did his, uh, you know, classic uh, Band of Gypsies New Year's Eve show that yielded Machine Gun, you know, that great performance. Um, and then I would also, I know this sounds corny, but I'd like to play the, the Red Rocks in, in Sedona, Arizona, you know, that massive natural amphitheater. I think that'd be kind of cool. But mostly I just want to play a venue that's filled with people. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I like. As a fan, I've got some really awesome pieces of memorabilia. At the Kiss show, my dad went hog wild for me. So I got the Kiss belt buckle. I got uh, a Gene Simmons, uh, the uh, samurai headpiece. So it was essentially this weird wig that just sat on your head and it had the thing that came up and went back and it was like little strands of yarn, black hair. Um, I've got some beetle bobbleheads that my mom gave me that are really, really cool. Uh, I've got a, an Alice Cooper school desk. It's like a, a plastic little miniature school desk from Schools Out, you know, from that album. and. Uh, it's got all the carvings in it. It's really killer. It's like, it was really well made. It must have been like some really nice piece of promo merchandise. And then of course the mustache and sunglasses that Boots Electric sells. Uh, and the capes. We sell capes. I mean, I think that's killer. Never really leave it
Dr. Pepper. I, my, I don't drink because I think it's a lot of work for a shitty high. You know, I'd rather just do street drugs. It's quicker, it's easier, and you know what you're getting. Something really fucking bad. There's no warning labels on it. There's no government picture. There's none of that bullshit, so I love it. But uh, I can't do without the ginseng because if I can't get speed, you know, let's, let's just talk turkey here. Let's just talk hard reality because I'm a Christian. I better tell the truth. If I can't get hard street drugs, then I need the next best thing, and that's the Chinese. They seem to be able to get it all for us. <laughs> Don't be my rider, just be my friend. Friends are talking and they're telling you. See them alone, cause the boy's bad news. Oh. Friends are talking and they're telling you. See them alone, cause the boy's bad news. Oh.